Naming and writing formulas for covalent compounds. Covalent compounds are also called molecules. They're made up of two or more non-metals. They share electrons. Covalent molecules clump together. If we take a look at the diagram here, we see one, two, three, four, five water molecules that are attracted to each other by weak hydrogen bonds. Covalent compounds rely on the chemical formula to reveal the components of the molecule. Covalent compound subscripts show the actual number of atoms in the molecule. This is unlike in ionic compounds where it simply showed the ratio. Naming covalent compounds. Names may reveal the components, but often they do not. For example, C2H6O3 is commonly known as ethanol, and C12H22O11 is sucrose or table sugar. These names must be memorized or looked up. H2O is called water. Water is a binary covalent compound because it contains two nonmetal elements joined together by one or more covalent bonds. Rules for naming binary covalent compounds. To name binary covalent compounds, we need to know prefixes. The prefixes show how many atoms of each element are present. If we look at the chart on the right, we'll see that mono means one, di means two, tri, three, tetra, four, penta, five, hexa, six, hepta, seven, octa, eight, nona, nine, and deca, ten. You should know this list. When we're naming covalent compounds, the second element's name ends with ide, or I-D-E. Write the most metallic ion that is furthest left on the periodic table first. So in the example below, we have dinitrogen trioxide. Note that we use the prefixes to show the number of each atom present. Di means two, tri means three. Note also that we end the second one with IDE. Now how do we decide which one to write first, nitrogen or oxygen? And the answer lies in the periodic table following the rule that we just talked about. The element that's the furthest left on the periodic table is the one that's written first and that's why nitrogen is written first and the oxygen is written second. Here's another example, carbon dioxide. We have one carbon and by convention we don't write mono at the beginning of it if it's the first element written. So we have carbon dioxide, one carbon, two oxygens. Writing formulas for covalent compounds. The exact number of atoms is always shown in the formula. Carbon dioxide means one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms are present. N2O3 dinitrogen trioxide means two nitrogen atoms and three oxygen atoms are present. Try the practice problems on page 195. Workbook pages 71 to 72 include problems involving naming formulas of covalent compounds. Here's a summary of naming. The first thing to check for is to see whether the formula starts with a metal. If it does, the compound is ionic. Next thing to check for is, is it multivalent? If it's multivalent, you'll need to use Roman numerals. If it's not multivalent, simply name the metal ion first. Does it end with a single nonmetal? If the answer is yes, use the IDE ending. If the answer is no, it ends in a polyatomic ion. You'll need to look up the polyatomic ion in the ion chart. If the compound does not start with a metal, it's covalent. And then we use the prefix system of naming just discussed. Check out the tips for naming compounds on page 196. 
Then try the practice problems on page 197.